People often ask me for recommendations about particular cities and towns within the state of Illinois. There are some really nice places in the state, and then there are some that are just awful, which is what we're addressing with this video. So based on crime, poverty, and a general sense of despair, here are 10 cities in the land of Lincoln that I would suggest you avoid. Number 10, Moline. On the northwestern border of Illinois sits the city of Moline, a community of 42,985. But people have started leaving this area, and for good reason. Between 2010 and 2020, the population decreased by 498 residents. For one thing, the poverty rate of 12.2%, while it could be worse, is higher than the national rate of 11.4%. And that's because income levels are also lower. The median household income in the U.S. is $62,843, but in Moline, it's only $54,431. This is very much a blue-collar town, with manufacturing being in the largest industry, with 18.9% of the jobs. And then there's the crime. Moline's crime exceeds both the state and national rates. Their overall crime rate is 22% higher than the national average and 45% higher than the Illinois average, with 219 violent crimes, including one murder, and 978 property crimes reported in the previous year. Moline is safer than only 18% of U.S. cities. But hey, if you don't mind all that, the real estate prices in the city are 34% below the Illinois average. Number 9. Wood River Wood River is a community in southwestern Illinois near St. Louis. The stats for this town of 10,464 are so bad that I wouldn't recommend it to my worst enemy. The overall crime rate for this community is 145% higher than the national average and 190% higher than the Illinois average. Violent crimes are 49% higher than the national average. Wood River is safer than only 8% of the cities in the U.S., and the chance of becoming a victim of a crime is 1 in 18. To live in this area, you'd also have to be okay with being poor. 21% of Wood River's residents live below the poverty line, and the median household income is only $46,860. They don't have many decent jobs in this area. Two of the three largest industries are accommodation and food services and retail, so nobody's making their fortune here. Number 8. Chicago Heights as the name implies, this community of 27,480 is near Chicago. Being near a major city is important to a lot of people, but this is one place that should be scratched off the list. It's almost impossible to live the American dream in Chicago Heights. 24.2% of the residents fall below the poverty line for one thing. The median household income is well below the national average at only $50,186. Part of that is due to a lack of education. In the U.S., 88% of the adults over the age of 25 have earned a high school diploma, and 32.1% have earned a four-year degree. Chicago Heights doesn't come anywhere near that. Only 80.6% have a high school diploma, and 16.3% have a college degree. The people who live in the city also have to deal with elevated crime. They reported two murders, 119 assaults, and 576 property crimes. Their crime rate is 16% higher than the national average, and 37% higher than the Illinois average. Chicago Heights is safer than only 10% of U.S. cities, and the chance of being a victim is 1 in 37. Number 7, Granite City. 27,549 people call Granite City home, but that's down from 29,849 in the previous census, and there's a reason why people are leaving. In this area, there is a 1 in 32 chance of becoming a victim of a crime. The crime rate is 34% higher than the national average and 58% higher than the Illinois average. If you isolate just the violent crimes, it's worse. They're 112% higher than the national average. Included in that are 169 assaults, 29 robberies, and one murder. Oh, and they also had 655 property crimes, so you have to really watch your stuff around this area. Granite City is safer than only 8% of U.S. cities. The poverty rate in Granite City is 19.3%, and the median household income is only $51,469. Normally, when you see numbers like this, you can draw a straight line back to low education rates, but Granite City's percentage of adults who have graduated high school is actually slightly above the national rate at 89.3%. Number 6. East St. Louis Most lists of terrible Illinois communities include East St. Louis. It's considered by a lot of people to be the absolute worst city in the state. It's beyond depressing to drive through the area. Dilapidated buildings, burned out cars, graffiti, it's just horrible to look at. Those who can leave do. From 2010 to 2020, their population dropped from 27,006 people to 18,469. With such a small population, the crime rates are just unbelievable. 36 murders, 32 robberies, 173 assaults, 415 property crimes. The violent crime rate is an astounding 163% above the national average. 
there is a 1 in 39 chance of becoming a victim of a crime, and the FBI says that East St. Louis is safer than 8% of U.S. cities. I'm just surprised that there are cities doing worse. 33.4% of the residents live below the poverty line, and the median household income is only $24,343. There just aren't any jobs in this city. There are jobs to be found across the river in St. Louis, but when you don't have any money, transportation is difficult. And in this community, if you're fortunate enough to own a car, it's only a matter of time before someone tries to steal it. Number 5. Belleville Some famous people have come from Belleville, including Buddy Upson, better known as Jed Clampett on the Beverly Hillbillies, singer-songwriter Jeff Tweedy of the band Wilco, and actress and jazz singer Leah Delaria, best known for her role as Big Boo on Orange is the New Black. But Belleville also has ordinary anonymous residents leaving town. The population decreased from 44,478 in 2010 to 42,404 in 2020. Part of that is due to a lack of decent jobs. The second largest industry in the city is retail. The median household income is almost $15,000 below the national average at only $48,099, and 14.1% of the residents fall below the poverty line. Another reason people leave the city is that there are much safer places they could live. In Belleville, the chance of becoming a victim of a crime is 1 in 32. It's safer than only 15% of U.S. cities. That's because with a population this size, they reported two murders, 225 other violent crimes, and 1,093 property crimes. The overall crime rate is 37% higher than the U.S. average and 62% higher than the Illinois average. Violent crimes are 43% higher than the national average. Number 4. Decatur Decatur puts a stench over central Illinois, quite literally. It's a dirty, depressing town that smells of soybeans. Yet 70,522 people call it home. Of course, that's down from 76,122 in the previous census. This place has a problem with both crime and poverty. Every night on the news, there's a report of some horrible crime that has taken place. The FBI's most recent report for Decatur listed 11 murders, 364 various other violent crimes, and 1,954 property crimes. The crime rate is 40% higher than the national average and 66% higher than the Illinois average. It's safer than only 16% of U.S. cities, and the chance of becoming a victim is 1 in 31. The median household income is $20,000 below the national median at only $42,701, so 22.1% of the residents live in poverty. That's because too many of the available jobs come from low-paying sectors. The three largest industries are manufacturing at 17.7% of the jobs, healthcare and social assistance at 15.4%, and retail at 13%. Number three, DeKalb. Fun fact about DeKalb, it's the hometown of supermodel Cindy Crawford. But that's about the only fun thing about DeKalb. This is a college town with the Northern Illinois University campus located there, so it really should be doing better than it is. They do have better education attainment rates than the U.S. averages, with 92.4% of the adults having a high school diploma, and 38.9% have a college degree, but that's about the only bright spot for DeKalb. Somehow, despite the higher education levels, they have an insane poverty rate of 28.5%, and the median household income is only $45,020. How is that even possible? Well, the data is a little bit skewed, because they count information provided by students, so that statistic has to be taken with a grain of salt. The largest industry, thanks to the university, is educational services, with 18.4% of the jobs, but the second and third largest industries are retail and accommodation of food services. The main reason I wouldn't recommend DeKalb is the crime. They reported 245 violent crimes, including one murder, so their violent crime rate is 49% higher than the national average. They also reported 1,284 property crimes, giving them an overall crime rate that is 54% higher than the national average and 82% higher than the Illinois average. DeKalb is safer than only 12% of U.S. cities, and the chance of becoming a victim is 1 in 28. Number 2. Kankakee You know how Illinois is known for having the governors go to prison? One of them, George Ryan, is from Kankakee. One might argue that that's just a coincidence, but there have actually been several corruption scandals involving politicians in Kankakee. There seems to be something in the water there. They have 1.31 times the usual number of people working in the public administration industry, some of which are police officers. In Illinois, there is an average of 2.6 police officers per 1,000 residents, but in Kankakee, where the population is 24,052, they average 2.8 officers. Of course, they need the extra officers because their overall crime rate is 83% higher than the national average and 116% higher than the Illinois average. When you look at violent crimes, it's even worse. 
With four murders and 229 various other violent crimes, the violent crime rate is 135% above the national average. The FBI considers Kankakee to be safer than only 5% of U.S. cities. There's a 1 in 24 chance of becoming a victim of a crime if you stick around this area. Then there's the issue with education. I don't know for sure that their school system sucks, but it certainly seems like it since 24.3% of the adults over 25 decided to drop out of high school and only 13.6% have bothered with a college education. Most jobs tend to prefer for their employees to have a high school diploma, so 28.9% of the people live in poverty, and the median household income is only $37,894. Number 1. Carbondale Carbondale is another college town that has more issues than it should. This is the site of Southern Illinois University, so education is the top industry in the area, accounting for 30% of the jobs. However, enrollment at SIU experienced a decline every year from 2016 to 2020, so there have been job layoffs over the last few years, not just for civil service workers, but also non-tenure track faculty members. 2021 is the first year where the freshman class has increased. The second and third largest industries are healthcare and retail. They do count the student's income when they take the census, but the poverty rate still shouldn't be anywhere near where it is. It's 43.1% compared to the national rate of 11.4%. That's just crazy. The median household income is only $22,152. And then there's the crime problem. Violent crimes are 112% above the national average. They reported one murder, 38 robberies, and 121 assaults. That's with a population of only 21,857. They also had 932 property crimes, so the overall crime rate is 93% higher than the national average and 127% higher than the Illinois average. For some reason, people seem to like it when I roast the state of Illinois, so if you're one of those people and you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up and maybe share it on social media. That would really help me out. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I remain stuck in the current field.